Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Ivo Graham, Zoe Lyons and Ed Byrne, Gary Delaney, Hugh Dennis and James Acaster. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, Chewbacca finally joining the dark side. <laughs> Chewbacca meeting Luke Shite Talker. <laughs> is the soldier saying, no, I'm afraid there's been a mistake. I'm not President Bush. I'm presently a Bush. <laughs> He's probably saying, at last, Theresa, you have finally decided to be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a soldier thanking Boris for the hairdresser recommendation? <laughs> Is he saying you are exactly what I don't want for Brexit? I want no strings attached. That is what we call satire. <laughs> <laughs> We should do more of that. Uh... And Hugh started his own applause break. You might want to take note. <laughs> um, that is a man dressed as a plant talking to a man who acts like a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. your name? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Stop this now, we can, we can... all of you. <laughs> you earn them or nothing. That's it, right? Uh, How so... did it feel then when you said that bit and there wasn't an applause at the end? It must have felt <laughs> awful. It felt real. Is this what Boris found when he used a coat hanger to unclog his shower? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very... Yeah, it's hair. Yeah. It's hair, people. It's just reality, you know? Uh, oh, How would you know, Dara? It's not just oh. hair. <laughs> 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 yeah. Zoe, like, I do the Dara's bald jokes. <laughs> Could somebody please yes, I'll just, tell you exactly yes, you just tell me so we he can move the... on with our lives. Boris is in the news because he did an article for The Telegraph in which he outlined his vision for Brexit and he's annoyed the rest of the Cabinet and everyone else. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. This is a picture of Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson visiting British troops in Estonia. This week he wrote an article for the Daily Telegraph in which he laid out his vision for a hard Brexit and repeated the disputed claim that £350 million a week could be made available for the NHS. The article was seen by many as a challenge to Theresa May's authority. At the time of recording, Johnson is still Foreign Secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Johnson's article controversial? Because it goes against what Theresa May is trying to put yep. out on the, her stall, her Brexit stall. She wants to... There's a possibility of a slightly soft Brexit, a sort of transitionary period yes. where we won't quite be out and we're not quite in, a bit like Catholic sex. And... <laughs> uh, you're allowed to be in, but then you've got to come you, out. You've got to come you out. Gotta be yeah. out. Yeah. You've got to be in when you're in, but you've got to be out when you're out. I'm glad you wrote it. I'm glad you wrote that article. Cos for too long now, we've all been wondering, what does Boris Johnson think about Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's such an elusive figure, you Google it and it comes up dry every time. <laughs> There's too much internal discussion about Brexit. We're just hearing too much about it. Mm. Frankly, fire the team who are doing it and just get, like, teenage boys mm. to negotiate it and at the end of every... How does the negotiation go? Mm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Just calm down the national discussion hugely. <laughs> what, what, what steps were taken? Oh, I can't remember. Stop hustling me. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, like, you go to their briefcases and go, is it, this is... How long is... This is a trade document. How long has this been sitting in your bag? Oh, I don't know. This <laughs> 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 He had a big row this week, didn't he, with the boss of the Statistics Authority over he the did. 350 he did, million yeah. claim. And a lot of it comes from confusion over the numbers as to whether it's gross or net. And the thing you need to understand is that Boris is gross. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Boris brought up the 350 million, and there should, a bell should go off when people say 350 million now. This is a gangster move, man. I respect him for it. Mm. Fair play. <laughs> lie, get exposed for it, and do the same lie to the same people without batting an eyelid. What <laughs> an absolute gangster. <laughs> Even now, when he was pulled up about it, he said, no, I didn't say that, I didn't say we'd get it back, I said we regain control of it. 
Like this, this 350 million pound, like it's the end of the crystal maze and it's flying around. <laughs> <laughs> We just need the 350 million pounds to just calm down so we can count it. That is a Brexit I would vote for. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> if it, every week they all had to get into the thing and just wrap it all out of the air. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, yes. so the first thing to go would be the Aztec zone. <laughs> <laughs> Like you're scum. <laughs> I am sort of hoping he does become leader of the Tory party, though, because I've got a two-part bet on, which is that the first part is that Boris, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump will all be in charge of their respective countries, and the second part is that within 15 minutes of Boris becoming leader, the world ends. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he gets his finger on that nuclear trigger. <laughs> Last thing on earth, Hugh Dennis walking into a lad Brooks with a smile on his face <laughs> as the world blows up around him. <laughs> Boris has learned one important thing, which is that you can say the number like the ridiculous 350 million as long as you whisper the words up to just beforehand. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, the Foreign Secretary is a broadband ad. Uh, <laughs> yes, you could have speeds of up to. Uh, 15 <laughs> meg, uh, per hypersecond. You uh, need that uh, little thing that you get at the end of visa adverts where they go, terms, conditions apply, you may lose your house, this bullshit. Yes. Goes, <laughs> That's what he's doing when yeah, he goes, yeah. blah, 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 blah. it's all the work. <laughs> How did the uh, Liberal Democrat leader, Vince Cable, describe Johnson? Oh, he called him a, a Poundland Donald Trump. Yeah. Yes, which is bad. You yeah. don't offend the people of Poundland. Yeah. They're the only people <laughs> with whom this country has a trade deal at the moment. Uh, so. <laughs> it's interesting, though, isn't it? Because he said he was a Poundland Donald Trump. In other words, he was an ego-driven fantasist. And then in the same sentence, he said that he, Vince Cable, could be the next Prime Minister. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. But it's just bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> This world is topsy-turvy. It is. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, more people have turned up at the Bournemouth Lib Dem conference than they were expecting. They had to put two more chairs out. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be a great Prime Minister. Mm? Uh, but I think he'd be... Vince Cable, take us all the way up to the top. Uh, it might be shaky at some times and maybe dangerous, but once we reach the summit, we'll skip... I'm thinking of cable cars. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, how did Donald Trump react to North Korea's latest missile test? Well, he called him, he called Kim Jong-un uh, Rocket Man. Yes. And, which must be, those nicknames are really annoying, aren't they? Don't you think, science guy? Thank you. Let's just get to quite happy with that one. And I'm also to imagine that Kim Jong-un is quite happy with Rocket Man. I mean, it's not like Crooked <laughs> Hillary or little Marco uh, from Marco Rubio. Like, normally he picks insulting, but Rocket Man's kind of cool. Elton uh, John must be a Elton John is, is, though, must well, he? he? must think there's money coming yeah. in from North Korea now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. when, he, when he finally just lays waste to North Korea and it's just a smoking hole, Kim Jong-un will just come out and go, I'm still standing. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo, bravo, boom. They've got a missile called a no-dong. No-dong. No -dong. No -dong. <laughs> yeah, they've got a no-dong. Which is very much a motto for my life. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think it's great he keeps testing nuclear weapons. I don't know why everyone's complaining. The more he tests, the less he's got. <laughs> <laughs> test them all! <laughs> This, by the way, sorry, oh, photo of the year. is definitely photo of the year. This is, if not of, of, of all time, this... <laughs> I just adore this. Yeah. <laughs> this, is just bad. this is just a random 11-year-old who wrote in saying, I'd love to mow the White House lawn, <laughs> and as part of it got Trump just shouting at him. Yeah. So, uh, Tighten up those borders. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And when you've done that, I've got a wall that needs building yeah. too. I'm not surprised he's cross, though. The kid has mowed off his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Baron, why are you mowing the lawn? We have people to do that. Honey, why is Baron? That's not our son. <laughs> school in Maryland right now. Why is he mowing the lawn? <laughs> he's probably going, you are my last option to want to be White House press secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the finished job that the kid did? Oh, well, I'm not impressed with the job no, so far. Well, well, the thing is, though, it, it makes sense. If you see it as an aerial shot, right. he mowed in, uh, I voted for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Let's see how that round. The points go to James Lee and Gary. Now we play a round called I Like a Buttery Brexit Bass. <laughs> this <laughs> involves Gary and Ivo, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is the stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is class. Can I have somebody talk about that, please? Ivo. Hello, my name's Ivan. I'm a posh man, and that's because I studied at an all-boys boarding school. <laughs> Not just any all-boys boarding school, I studied for five years at the least popular all-boys boarding school of them all. I studied for five years at Eton College. <laughs> I like to mention that early doors, because then, if you think that I've come across up to this point as an entitled prick, you have your reasons. <laughs> If, on the other hand, you think I've come across as a very charming and humble young man, well, just goes to show what a master of disguise I truly am. <laughs> Not a popular school. When I started doing comedy, I was nervous about dropping the E-bomb on stage, and then a friend said you should mention it, maybe at the end of gigs, if the gig has gone well. Maybe with a sort of triumphalist tone. Tough luck, fools. This show was brought to you by the establishment. Good night. <laughs> and I saunter off. I'm in denial about my past. I'm a classic example politically of a champagne socialist, someone who believes in all the left-wing things like social justice and equality, uh, but fundamentally I'm aware I come from a background of privilege, which means I don't really have to walk the walk. Uh, classic champagne socialist, even though, ironically, I don't actually like uh, champagne. And I do agree with quite a lot of conservative policy, so it's a tricky balance. <laughs> it's my everyday life, I don't know who I am, I don't know who to vote for. I've voted Labour in every UK general election so far, but mainly because I've always lived in quite safe Labour seats, so it doesn't really affect anything. <laughs> That's the beauty of being a champagne socialist in a safe Labour seat. You can pop along, vote Labour with all your cool left-wing friends, but know that overall, things will probably be fine. <laughs> Put me in a swing seat next time. Then we'll see how much of Daddy's money I really want. Thank you very much, Ivo. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is animals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to eat anything labelled reformed ham, as I think it's unfair that the pigs are slaughtered after they've got their lives back on track. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I had to get towed home, cos Ratty and Molly were too pissed. <laughs> Whenever I see ginger people going grey, I'm always reminded of the sad plight of our native squirrels. <laughs> I went round Grandad's to walk his dog. As I was leaving the house, he said, don't forget poo bags. I was like, all right, Gran. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's a cat person. She's got fishy breath, shits in a tray and disappears for days at a time. <laughs> I tried swimming with dolphins once, but I didn't like it as I found them very clicky. <laughs> Dolphins who die without any money are given a pauper's funeral. <laughs> the other day I was chewing on some monkey nuts and now I'm banned from the zoo. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I'm addicted to screwing dogs. Have you tried patches? What's he, a poodle? <laughs> I went to the zoo to watch the monkeys wanking. Then I went to watch the crocodiles and I was still wanking. <laughs> round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ivo, which category would you like? I would like environment, please, Dara. OK, your category is environment. The answer is fat nappies and condoms. <laughs> what is the question? What was the original title of Sun, Sex and Suspicious Parents? <laughs> is it what does Jacob Rees-Mogg refuse to touch? <laughs> <laughs> is it name three things you can buy battered in Scotland? <laughs> Is it uh, one of the Secret Service code names for Donald, Eric, and Melania Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the most we can hope to walk away with from Brexit negotiations? <laughs> yeah. mm. Is it what? What's the strapline for the movie Elvis: The Final Years? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just... In 
the rat Sainsbury's, what three items constitute the meal deal? <laughs> <laughs> Is it three things you should never put in a nutri bullet? <laughs> <laughs> What are the last three things I put my penis in? Oh. <laughs> Is it what are the three worst nicknames I had at school? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know this one. Genuine right. sympathy, that was the reaction I was going for there. <laughs> but there is nicknames now. <laughs> <laughs> Team left to right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy to be that one. <laughs> <laughs> what are the three things in Axel Rose's hurricane preparedness kit? <laughs> <laughs> this is the fatberg that's been found in the oh, sewer in London, yeah. which ah. is a massive monster, apparently. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. The question I was looking for was, what are some of the items that make up the monster fatberg, which was found in London's sewage network last week? This is news that sewage workers in East London have discovered a giant mass of congealed fat underground. It's thought to be one of the biggest ever. At 250 metres long, the fatberg is estimated to weigh 130 tonnes, and workers predict it will take three weeks to clear. What does everyone make of the monster fatberg? Can I just say, we that's all yeah. want to go of it. We, yeah. we all want to have a go at helping break that up. It, uh, they're, they're shooting it with, like, jet massive wash. jet washes. Yeah, they to are, just yeah. watch. How satisfying would that be? Uh, they should just get a load of tortilla chips. <laughs> I can't help thinking that clearing a massive 250-metre-long fatberg is going to be one of the jobs we find it more difficult to fill after Brexit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blocked my own drain using my own pressure washer. It was absolutely chock full of mine, my wife's and my children's shit. <laughs> <laughs> and probably yours, yeah. Dara. Possibly, possibly, possibly yours. Often in there. I've, I've and... driven out to your house specially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might well have been the one that caused the blockage. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you... it's difficult to fingerprint this stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I it was not difficult. Getting rid of it, I got, it, got the pressure went down, <laughs> and it was so... It was more satisfying than the combined efforts of doing all those shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did it wrong once when I was doing much the same thing. I was unblocking a, a drain, but you probably did it from the... So you weren't in the way of whatever... I was... got a bit pebble-dashed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you? I, was, yeah. I just unblocked a massive sort of block, and uh, then I just heard this sort of... <laughs> and then this tsunami of shite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it towards me. It hadn't occurred to me, weirdly, that there would be a tsunami of shite. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only person here who gets a man in when that needs to be yeah. done? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just say, I, I, I am sure. a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An incident a few years back in, in, in Thailand. We were in one of those holiday villages, the, the little cottages, you know, and, um, I, well, we had to move because of an incident. Um, <laughs> we had to pack up and move, and I had to go to the reception and go, we're going to need a different cottage. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need a bigger toilet. You know, I have broken this cottage. <laughs> I want you, I want I you to brick broken... up this cottage, <laughs> never rent this cottage again. Yeah. <laughs> This is now a haunted cottage. Uh, I broke Koh Samui. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut down the entire <laughs> island. I have done a poo so big. <laughs> this entire island, <laughs> island is now over. It's finished. <laughs> oh, that was great. I had a horrible time in Thailand once. She said her name was No Dong. I'm so proud of the fat bird man. I'm so proud of it. My whole life, all I've done, dedicated my whole life to try and make the world's biggest fatberg ever. And every day I wake up, I'll just get a big vat of oil and I'll just tip it down the shower drain. I'll shout, grow, fatberg, grow! <laughs> every morning that people come round, I'm like, you got any nappies? You flush them down the toilet! <laughs> Do you watch the news? I'll be big one day. And now, finally, the fatberg has happened and I've made my mark in history. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's right to call it a fatberg if it's actually man-made. I think it should be the Shitanic. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Leonardo DiCrepio. Who is trying to get a piece of this fatberg? The, mu the Museum of London. Yes. And Grace. And it's like, they contacted Thames Water. Who, who had 
who drew the short straw? That'd be the person to ask. <laughs> yeah, you know that massive congealed fat that's full of shit and condoms? Mm. Can we have it? <laughs> <laughs> they won't get the fat bird. They're going to find themselves in a bidding war with yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> Buy that fat bug, and guess what? I'm gonna flush it all down the toilet again. They <laughs> 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 could use it at Madame Tussauds for the unpopular celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> Room, something well, like that. Well, <laughs> Listen, for all we know, this is just Madame Tussauds quietly like melting down the Jimmy Savile statue. <laughs> 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 Get rid of all the 1970s section. <laughs> Get rid of all the 70s section. <laughs> Sorry, Rolf. Bring <laughs> <laughs> them all down the sink. Quick, quick. Uh, moving on. Moving on? Why would you want to move on from this? Do you know what? I, I could talk about the Fatberg for the show. rest of the day, but fat I feel fat. other stories. You just feel you don't I'm... like it because Fatberg was your nickname at school. <laughs> <laughs> it truly was. I know. Uh, it was Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> Even then. I did not look like a 45 year old man at school. <laughs> no, I didn't, you didn't, I didn't know, know me. But he did. What it didn't look like a 45 year old man. It looked like a fat bird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, it wasn't all coming know, back know. now. It's, ah, I'm regressing. It this wasn't like... either of those anyway, was it? It was Megabus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Who annoyed British holidaymakers over the weekend? Foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, just milling around these foreign places. Oh, no, they're here as well. <laughs> we were enough of you alone at home. I came here to get away from you. <laughs> it was Ryanair, Dara. It was Ryanair. Why was it Ryanair? What did well, they do? Well, they cancelled lots of flights. They did. They? They can... So, you know, it's not all bad news. You might lose your holiday that you've waited full year for, but on the other hand, you never have to go to Luton. <laughs> Um, uh, they cancel 80 flights on Sunday, and they're, they're averaging more than 50 flights they're cancelling a day at the moment because pilots have gone on holidays. Mm. Uh, yeah, which is kind of also sort of sweet that the pilots all go on holidays together. Hey, here we go. Oh, no, let's get the train. Uh, <laughs> it's just business as usual, really. On the flight over, they sell you a lottery ticket, and if you win, they fly you back. <laughs> If they messed up when the pilots have their holiday, why not just find out where the pilot wants to go on holiday and they can fly that plane to that place? Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read at this week's topics and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things for a continuity announcer to say. The following programme contains swearing right from the fucking start. <laughs> Up next, The Walking Dead. Oh, sorry, Songs of Praise. <laughs> it's time for some continuity! <laughs> now on Channel 5, we explore the bizarre underworld of bondage ballroom dancing. <laughs> It's come strictly. <laughs> and now it's my favourite, the crystal meth maze. <laughs> Coming up next on Channel 4... Oh, my God, those buildings are in the shape of a four! This is amazing! <laughs> And now our Friday night horror film. Bruce Willis stars as a ghost who doesn't realise he's dead in the sick... Oh, I've ruined it, haven't I? <laughs> Up next on Naked Attraction, a man who's going to spend the next three years telling his friends it was a lot colder than it looked in the studio. <laughs> if you're sat at home this afternoon and you're not in your 80s, well, this programme's just like you. It's pointless. <laughs> Well, we all love Chanel number no. five. This is nothing like it. It's Channel Five. <laughs> <laughs> and now our Saturday night thriller. Kevin Spacey stars as a shady gangster, Kaiser Soze. <laughs> in I've done it again, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> From the makers of Love Island 
cul-de-sac orgy. <laughs> Coming up next on ITV, will Dara cop off with Ed in Love Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> next up, the 40 year old virgin. Oh, sorry, Robot Wars. <laughs> The following programme contains material that some viewers may find distressing. Unless you're my ex-wife Karen, of course, nothing's going to melt that cold bitch's heart. <laughs> we just bought Bake Off, cos any anyone can. We're a porn channel. We bought Bake Off. <laughs> just a joke! <laughs> just a little joke, but we've got it now. <laughs> Not a new series of Bake Off. <laughs> I'm just going to show it. I'm just banging, banging, banging. Bake off! Bring it again! <laughs> it's just a junk! This is Dave Deja Vu, where we repeat the repeats we repeated earlier. <laughs> now, ladies, you know what time it is. Time to pour yourself a glass of wine, light some candles, cos next up it's... Darrow Brian's Go 8-Bit. <laughs> That is, that is unlikely, Ed. Unlikely. Correct. Uh, <laughs> OK, the next topic is things a news reporter would never say. Well, they said it would never happen, but after a hunt over 12 years spanning 62 countries, the police have finally found Wally. <laughs> Irma has been blowing all over the city for two days now. <laughs> but enough about your mum. Here's the weather. <laughs> In the studio with us today, Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump in what can only be described as a news round exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> We're yet to hear President Trump's view on the matter. <laughs> well, I have spoken to a lot of people here at the SNP conference and they have all said the same thing. Piss off back to London, you English bastard. <laughs> And I'm at Buckingham Palace, where excitement is growing amid rumours that Prince Charles has absolutely lost the plot and is about to appear on the balcony, bollock naked, singing The Lion Sleeps Tonight. <laughs> Damn right, BBC News is biased. This next story is about how I'm hot to trot and all the ladies want to do me. <laughs> <laughs> it's now been four days since Piers Morgan went missing. The police have appealed for anyone with information on his whereabouts to please, please, please keep it to themselves. <laughs> and now for the news in your local area, you've got thrush. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Orla Guerin. <laughs> I'd really like a hug. <laughs> Here are the headlines. <laughs> I'm just saying, say spoiler alert next time or something. Some of us want the weather to be a surprise. <laughs> and I'm reporting now from the DUP conference this year, which is surprisingly sponsored by Grindr. <laughs> And we've got some more intel on the killers. They're good live, but their albums are patchy as fuck. <laughs> Finally, we've discovered the true identity of Banksy. He is none other than... the Stig. <laughs> I met a woman earlier who'd lost both her home and her business in the flood. I asked her how she was coping. She told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> Okay, again, let's go to James, Hugh and Gary! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Gary Delaney, Hugh Dennis and James A. Catcher. <laughs> Commiserations, Ivor Graham, Zoe Lyons and Edward. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night.